my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive. Six, seven, eight, feet. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast. I'm your co-host for today, Dr. Mike Akinfora. Today I have with me Dr. Josh Ax. Doc, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great, Mike. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks so much for being on the show. I'm going to read Dr. Josh's bio real quick, and then we're going to get into his new book, Eat Dirt. So Dr. Josh Ax, DNM, DC, CNS, is a doctor of natural medicine, nutritionist, and author with a passion to help people get well using food as medicine and operates one of the world's largest natural health websites at www.draxe.com. That's draxe.com. Dr. Axe has been a physician for many professional athletes. In 2009, he began working with the Wellness Advisory Council and traveled to the 2012 Games in London to work with USA athletes. Dr. Axe is an expert in herbal medicine, nutrition, digestive health, and athletic performance. He's been featured on many television shows and stations, including The Dr. Oz Show, CBS, and NBC. In his spare time, Dr. Axe competes in triathlons and cross-trains with his wife, Chelsea, who is also a health nut. Dr. Axe, welcome to the show. Hey, Mike. Again, thanks for having me. Awesome. Can you tell people a little bit about your journey? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, for, for myself, and I think so many people in the medical or natural health realm, uh, you know... I had a health crisis within my own family and my growing up, my family was always into health and fitness, but at 40 years old, my mom was diagnosed with cancer, a breast cancer was, which was, again, was shocking to us because we just thought she was the picture of health. And our family lived in what I call the medical model of the time. You know, anytime we were sick, we were given prescription antibiotics. We didn't know anything about nutrition or chiropractic or, uh, or, or, or natural medicine. And so, you know, she went through that traditional medical system and went through chemotherapy. And I can still remember as a kid, my mom going, uh, walking out of the hospital for her first chemo treatment and seeing her throw up in a bucket. I remember her hair falling out when she was combing her hair in chunks and just remember just how sick and ill she got. And that's really what really fueled me to become a physician as a young kid and seeing my mom as sick as she was. And so my mom continued her treatments. And at the end of her chemo, the doctor said to her, her oncologist said, you're cancer free and healthy. And we were so excited, but I'll tell you, for the next 10 years after going through chemotherapy, my mom was really sicker than ever. She spent half of her life in bed, had no energy, no quality of life, was diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. She ended up having chronic fatigue syndrome, getting put on three different prescription medications, antidepressants, and was just sick all the time. And this went on for 10 years. And then after 10 years, uh, I actually really developed a passion for health. I had... I've been working as a nutritionist in Orlando. I was in a chiropractic college training there. I was also doing a lot of studying things on functional medicine. And I got a call from her and she said, I've got bad news. I've been diagnosed with cancer again. She said, what do I do? And I said, mom, I'll be home. I got on a plane. I immediately flew home. We prayed together and we just really felt led to take care of her all naturally. And so we started taking care of her all naturally. We started juicing vegetables every single day, started uh, having her drink bone broth using frankincense oil. We had her doing lymphatic massage and chiropractic care and reducing stress. And we actually, one of the things I had her do is I had her put in these, uh, record herself reading uh, healing Bible verses and, and, and meditations. And she s said them into a recorder and 15 minutes before she went to bed at night, she would speak those or she would put those earbuds in and listen to those for 15 minutes before she went to bed and just really did all of these different things. And, and after four months, we went back to the oncologist and he redid a CT scan and he called us two days later and he said, he said, this is very unusual, but your tumors have shrunk in half. He said, I've never seen this, but I come back in nine months. She went back nine months later. And at that point she was in complete remission. And today my mom is actually in the best shape of her life. She uh, actually turned 65 here in a few weeks and um, just has fantastic health. And, um, and anyway, and she actually fe says she feels better now in her sixties than she did when she was in her thirties. And so anyways, with my mom, again, you know, that's a big part of my journey was seeing the way that my mom overcame, um, a number of illnesses and really regained her health through the power of natural medicine. And so that really, a lot of these principles are what I teach in my book, eat dirt. I love that. What a, what a wonderful story. And, you know, you really 
I have a very similar story with my wife and received the same phone call while I was ju just heading up to the office. And it's now seven years later, cancer free. And she is truly in the best physical, mental and emotional health that she's ever been in. So and, and thank goodness that we have this training that we're able to help. So what you you talk about, Josh, is uh, leaky gut. What causes leaky gut and what is leaky gut? So leaky gut occurs, and I really believe, first off, leaky gut is the root cause of, of, of most disease today. You know, Hippocrates said over 2,000 years ago, all disease begins in the gut. And I, I believe that so much of that is true. If I look at my mom's condition, one of her problems was she was having chronic constipation. In fact, she had an average of one bad movement a week for over two years chronic constipation since she went through chemo. And that was a big part of her illness. And so we started having her do things to overcome that. But leaky gut occurs when you get microscopic holes in your intestinal lining or essentially something called tight junctions open up. So things start passing into your bloodstream that should never be able to enter your bloodstream. So undigested food particles and proteins such as gluten, bad bacteria, um, you know, uh, toxins, all of those types of things enter into the bloodstream. And kind of imagine your intestines as a net with very small holes in it. If you get a rip in the net, large things can pass through that should never pass through. And when that happens, your body recognizes those as foreign invaders and starts a inflammatory response and then over time an immune response. And if that continues to happen over time, it can lead to more serious issues such as inflammatory bowel disease or autoimmune disease. But a lot of people have leaky gut syndrome and don't even know it. In fact, a lot of times when people hear the word leaky gut, they might tend to think, well, that sounds like some sort of diarrhea or some sort of like chronic digestive issue. And really, it's not. I mean, there are people – just let me just go through a rundown of some of the most common warning signs that people have leaky gut. Brilliant. And uh, yeah, and, and don't even know it. And so one of the biggest one is uh, food sensitivities. That's a big warning sign that somebody has leaky gut. So if you have a food sensitivity or intolerance, then, then you probably have leaky gut. Also basic things uh, such as um, digestive issues, such as gas, uh, bloating, um, loose stools. So if your stools aren't well formed and normal, are you going regular ba on a regular basis or constipation? Those are all warning signs that you have leaky gut. Again, autoimmune disease whether it's lupus or rheumatoid arthritis or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, all big warning signs of later stages of leaky gut. Um, thyroid issues of all types, malabsorption of certain vitamins. If you struggle with low energy, have low B12, magnesium, iron, or zinc, that's a warning sign you have leaky gut. Candidiasis, um, inflammatory skin conditions such as psoriasis, eczema. Um, even acne and age spots, these are signs of leaky gut. And then mood issues such as depression and autism are big warning signs as well. In fact, uh, a friend of mine, Dr. David Perlmutter, he's the author of a book called Grain Brain, really hits on this in his book talking about leaky gut and its connection to the brain or the gut-brain connection and how um, this issue leaky gut can affect the mood as well. So again, all of those conditions and many more are associated with leaky gut. And what happens today, Mike, so often is uh, patients will go into their physicians and they will treat the symptom. They will not treat the root cause of disease. So if most of these issues are, are resulting in, in the gut from whether it's poor diet or organ malfunction or emotional stress or toxicity or whatever it might be, you know, a lot of times what happens today is, you know, they'll go to their doctor and they go in with a thyroid issue and then they're treated with a thyroid medication or even a thyroid supplement. And that's still not fixing the root cause of these disease. So again, leaky gut uh, is really, um, you know, what Hippocrates was referencing thousands of years ago. And it's the root cause of disease. And if you're not healing leaky gut, for the most part, people aren't addressing the root cause. Absolutely. So we talked about some of the things that create leaky gut and, and make it worse. Talk to me about some, uh, some foods that are really healthy and a lifestyle that's healthy for, for this. Sure. Well, you know, uh, when, it com when it comes to leaky gut syndrome, first off, I want to talk about the foods to stay away from and then the foods to add in. The, the foods you should be staying away from, number one is going to be um, – uh, processed sugar. We know sugar feeds candida. 
candidiasis or pathogenic bacteria will actually produce their own toxins that will eat away at the gut lining. So processed sugar is number one. Uh, number two would be unsprouted, uh, unprepared grains. And so traditional wheat bread today and gluten. Uh, but, you know, these grains that are hard to digest. Now, I don't think all grains are villainous or evil. I think that grains, if they're prepared properly, as uh, has done throughout history to where they're oftentimes sprouted and then oftentimes then they're lacto-fermented to where they're essentially pre-digested. I think those types of grains many people do well with still today, and it shouldn't be the main staple of the diet, but can be a part of the diet. But again, grains in general, 99% of grains are not, uh, are not fermented or sprouted. And so again, I think that that's probably the second worst food for leaky gut. The third I would say would be hydrogenated oils. And there are a lot of hydrogenated oils that people are consuming that, that, that we don't realize are unhealthy. In fact, I know a lot of people, including uh, you know, naturopaths and nutritionists and chiropractors and holistic MDs who go to the health food store and then they buy chips with sunflower oil on them or safflower oil. Well, those are omega-6 fats that are fried. Those chips are still fried. And those are partially hydrogenated oils, very similar to a canola oil, um, actually, even worse because they are uh, b- because they are um, uh, they're less stable. And so, again, we consume even in the health food stores a lot of these partially hydrogenated oils uh, that are um, that go bad because they're heated and fried and, and added into a lot of products. So that would be another big one. And then genetically modified organisms kill good bacteria in the gut lining as well. And I'll throw one other food. It's not really a food. It's a beverage. Tap water. Tap water is loaded with chlorine and fluoride. Fluoride has been proven to kill off probiotics in the gut, leading to leaky gut. So those are the things you want to stay away from. In terms of food you want to start adding in, my number one food by far is bone broth. You know, bone broth, and there's actually, I just want to put this on everybody's radar, there's going to be an incredible new product coming out here in the next few weeks. Actually, I know it's going to be released May 1st. There's going to be a product called Bone Broth Protein Powder, which is, again, bone broth liquid in a powder form where it's just dried and dehydrated. And it's going to be the number one selling protein on the planet here in the future because it's gut-friendly. You know, a lot of these protein powders people consume today are very hard to digest. But just in general, drinking bone broth, it contains the amino acids it's proline, glycine, and glutamine, all of which are uh, crucial for repairing the intestinal tract and what's called healing and sealing the gut lining. So again, number one superfood, bone broth. Everyone should be drinking it every day, at least one cup a day of bone broth. Number two is cultured, uh, specifically uh, fermented foods such as fermented vegetables, sauerkraut, kimchi, kvass, uh, also um, things like... Uh, Coconut kefir is fantastic. My third food would be probiotic-rich goat's milk kefir. So goat's milk kefir uh, and goat's milk cheeses are good. Um, Coconut products such as coconut oil and coconut flour, getting those good medium-chain fatty acids. Um, And then I would say um, steamed vegetables are are great. And then uh, wild-caught meat, especially Wild caught salmon. Salmon is high in EPA and DHA, certain om- these omega 3 fatty acids, which are so important for reducing inflammation. And so those are the top foods that can really support healing leaky gut. And what a diet would look like, you know, one of the things that I put uh, many of my patients on, uh, Dr. Mike, is a crock pot diet or what I call one pot diet, where I am, um, you know, recommending. Um, <clears throat> Uh, people use their crock pot. So it's bone broth, vegetables, and meat. And, and eating that for most meals, again, uh, doing a lot of crock pot meals where all the foods are sort of cooked slowly together, that's really the ideal diet for healing leaky gut. That is, uh, we actually have an ebook, uh, crock pot cooking. And when we cook at home with the crock pot, the, it, it's just, it smells like heaven. You basically set it and forget it, and it's just brilliant. We we love that. And you eat the entire chicken or you eat the entire whatever you put in there, the fish. You can eat everything at that point. So that's brilliant. I love that. Can you talk to me about some supplements and herbs that fit into this? Yeah, absolutely. Well, in terms of supplements, again, I think the bone broth protein powder uh, or collagen powder, collagen's amazing as well. So there's collagen powder people can buy. 
Um, you know, I, I think it's good to find out what's called a multi-collagen supplement, something with uh, definitely type 1 and 3 and 2 collagen. Uh, but a collagen powder is my number one. Number two would be probiotics. You know, and not just any probiotics. I'd look for an SBO or a soil-based organism probiotic supplement or live probiotics. But probiotics are crucial for killing off bad bacteria, replenishing the good bacteria. And, and that is so important for healing leaky gut. And then also digestive enzymes are very beneficial. Doing two caps with meals and L-glutamine powder. L-glutamine, again, an amino acid found in bone broth, typically doing about five grams twice daily is great for your health. And then other things, licorice root extract, frankincense essential oil, all of these uh, herbs are beneficial for leaky gut. But jumping back, I think probiotics are something that so many people are deficient in today and they don't even realize it. You know, when you get too much bad bacteria in the gut, it causes nutrient malabsorption. So a lot of people that are struggling with um, uh, not being able to sleep at night is from a magnesium deficiency. A lot of people who have low energies during, during the day, it's from a B12 deficiency. And what people would tend to do, uh, Mike, is they would tend to go and then try and take a lot of vitamin B12. But uh, we've all heard the principle, you are what you eat. It's not completely true. You are what you digest. Mm -hmm. And many of us aren't digesting properly. And you really digest properly through having a good, healthy microbiome, which is done by having plenty of good microbes within the gut. And so there's a great study out of Stanford University, and they found that those who took uh, a probiotic supplement, their vitamin B levels all jumped up by 50% in a clinical trial. Wow. So, so, so again, we would tend to think, well, if I want more magnesium or B12, I need magnesium or B12. Well, actually, a lot of times you need more probiotics so you actually are absorbing and digesting the nutrients in your food. And again, 99% of people today, almost everybody has a probiotic deficiency. We don't have enough good bacteria. So that's another reason why I believe everybody should be on a probiotic supplement and getting probiotic foods in their diet on a daily basis. I love it. That is awesome. Tell me what you mean by eat dirt. Sure. Well, eating dirt essentially are micro exposures or natural immunizations. You know, there's obviously a lot of debate today um, in the health field about uh, vaccinations and immunizations and how they damage the body or help the body, depending on, on your point of view. But here's what I know is that, you know, these these unnatural immunizations may have side effects, but we know that we were created to be immunized through nature. So naturally building and boosting our immune system through nature. And this is something that uh, I really t teach about in my book is how to naturally boost your immunity um, through micro exposures. And here's what this looks like. Um, give, you, give you an example of natural immunization. You know, my, um, my in-laws just took their 30th wedding anniversary to Cancun here a few weeks ago. And when they went to Cancun, they did not drink the water because if uh, they went, you know <laughs> – if they would have drink the water, if I would drink the water, we'd get sick, right? We'd get dysbiote. We, we, we would have gut issues. Yes. But everyone in Mexico is drinking the water or a lot of people and they're not getting sick. They're not having that sort of response. Well, why is that? Well, they've naturally been immunized to whatever is in the water that would be causing us to be sick. And so that's something important to remember is that they've, they have a, they've acquired an, an immunity to whatever that is. And this is what science is finding today is that we naturally should be educating and building our immune system the same way. And we've enclosed ourselves off in this bubble today to where we rarely come in contact with the dirt. And whether somebody believes in uh, creationism or evolution, we, we know the top three world religions believe, it says within, I know within, within the Bible itself, is that we came from dust and mud. We, have a, we're, we are meant to be connected to the earth and we actually have what's called a symbiotic relationship with the earth, with dirt, and same thing within the, uh, with, with microbes or bacteria and dirt within our gut as well. And so all these things are important to remember. And so kind of circling back to the point here, um, we need to develop natural immunity. And here's how this works for us locally. If you've ever heard of raw honey being beneficial for allergies – Here's why it is, is raw honey that's local to your region contains around 200 different types of microbes and pollen. So if you're doing a tablespoon of raw honey every day for a year, raw local honey, 
um, you're getting those microbes. They're at boosting. They're training and, and supporting your immune system through the micro exposures to pollen and microbes. So when the spring and fall roll around, um, and all of a sudden there's this big dose of pollen. Well, you don't have a severe reaction or any reaction at all because you've been exposed every day over the past year through consuming raw local honey. The same thing goes for when you're eating dirt uh, locally as well. And so here's how this works. I, I go to my local farmer's market. I pick up some dirty carrots and I might wash them off. But you know, when, even when you're buying beets or carrots that have been in the ground, even when you lightly rinse them off, you'll notice there's these little brown specks embedded into the carrots or beets. Those are known as SBOs, those are soil-based probiotics. So when you're, there's a study showing that when you then eat those carrots, those soil-based organisms are helping you break down and digest the polysaccharides, the starches, and the things in the food you're eating. Versus if we go to our conventional grocery store today and buy those baby carrots that have been peeled and sprayed with chemicals, you're not only not getting the soil-based organisms, you're getting chemicals that are killing off the good bacteria in your gut. So again, these soil-based probiotics, so there's food-based probiotics as in kefir and yogurt and sauerkraut, but there are also soil-based probiotics that are crucial to the health of our bodies that most of us do not get in our diet today. In fact, this I think this is incredible. The average two-year-old consumes 500 milligrams of dirt a day. So essentially one capsule, you know, like a supplement capsule of dirt a day, they do that every single day, and that naturally trains their immune system. That's why having kids play outside is so important for their health. There's studies showing, uh, and this is in relation to something called the old friends theory or the hygiene hypothesis that says, you know, that uh, actually there's a study on the Amish and how they have less incidences of allergies and asthma because uh, they're outside more the way they live. And there's also another study that says that you have a pet, if you have a dog or cat, your, your chance of having asthma and allergies goes down by 52% because they're bringing good microbes and get, getting you more of these exposures. And so the principles of eat dirt are how to get these micro exposures, which really help you heal leaky gut. So again, in my book, Eat Dirt, I really go through um, how to do these micro exposures. I go through the exact diet a diet that's high in these microbes and probiotics and including raw honey and things like that into your diet. And, um, and really it teaches you how to heal leaky gut and how to naturally sort of boost your immunity, overcome autoimmune disease, uh, heal your thyroid, overcome food sensitivities. But um, th- those, th- that's kind of what I mean by, uh, by eat dirt. I love that. <clears throat> that's awesome. Tell me about the five gut types and also tell me about the gut type quiz. Well, you know, one of the things I found in practice um, is that not every patient is the same. Now, again, there are, there's a lot of overarching principles and, and some, some of the same things I recommend for patients, but every, every patient is unique and different. So I, I customized, I created a program called the Five Gut Type Diet uh, that's in my book, Eat Dirt. And this is something great for, um, for chiropractors and holistic MDs and nutritionists. Actually, I have a lot of them who buy my book and incorporate these principles into their practice. But um, basically, the five gut types are based on what's called TCM. That's traditional Chinese medicine that's been uh, around for about uh, almost 4,000 years. And I took the principles of my clinical practice as well as Chinese medicine and created the five gut types. And so the gut types are are based upon um, uh, sort of differences in what's causing your leaky gut. So for some people, they, uh, their, their gut type is immune gut, and that tends to be people with autoimmune disease and inflammatory bowel disease or food sensitivities, that they're having a major immune reaction. And, and so there's a gut type uh, specifically for that. And specifically, foods that are white uh, and foods that really nourish the colon and the lungs – uh, fall within the immune gut category, such, such as garlic and onions and cauliflower are most nourishing in pears. These foods are very nourishing for the colon and for the lungs. I have a gut type called the candida gut type that helps eliminate pathogenic bacteria where I recommend things like Powdarko tea, by far the most powerful herb in the world for um, fighting candida. I recommend astragalus there. We get into certain foods that kill off bad bacteria um, and surprisingly, uh, staying away from cold foods and raw foods, if you have candida, getting into more warming foods, 
based on uh, Chinese medicine and some of these principles. We also have a stressed gut type that's for helping heal adrenal and thyroid issues. I have a toxic gut type that's helping uh, natural treatment protocols for things such as cellular toxicity. I think this is good a good plan for people with cancer. Um, also great for people with liver and gallbladder issues. Gastric gut for people with acid reflux, uh, SIBO, uh, gas and bloating. And then, uh, and then the, um, and then, so anyway, so those are, those are the, um, th- those are some of the gut types that, that I referenced there in the book and go through and, and really create a custom plan for everybody. And then if people, uh, actually anybody listening right now can go and take a, this quiz and, um, and find out how severe their leaky gut is. But I have a website, it's, it's called isyourgutleaking.com. So isyourgutleaking.com, where people can take a leaky gut quiz to see how severe their leaky, uh, leaky gut is. And, and then I have recommendations there on how to fix it. Beautiful. That's isyourgutleaking.com. You got it. Perfect. Josh, thanks so much for being on the show today. Could you tell people where they can find you in the world? Yeah, absolutely. Well, my website is draxe.com. That's D R A X E.com. And on there, I've got a lot of free ebooks and recipes and things like that you can check out there. And also, you can find my book, uh, Eat Dirt, on Amazon.com. I think you'll love that. And then again, you can take the leaky gut quiz at isyourgutleaking.com. And uh, Mike, I appreciate you having me on. Josh, thanks so much for being on the show. I love the book, it was incredibly informing easy to read, and I I think it's going to be a huge hit and help a lot of people. So everybody, thanks for listening. If you would do us a great favor, if you like what you heard, please go to iTunes and write a review. In addition, we have a huge summit coming up in June of 2016 called Longevity and Anti-Aging Project. Uh, So look for that registration coming out soon. And thanks so much for being on the show. Dr. Axe, thank you, and we'll talk to you soon. Sounds great. Ciao, Thanks, everybody. Dr. Mike. Bye now.